Okay, this is the second part. I'm concluding it that uh, for the improvement of uh, for the to prove the first hypothesis that uh, plasmodium is the cause of malaria, we have to done uh, scientists have done the different sorry experiments. They take they took about hundred patients' blood for the test of the presence of plasmodium in the blood. Plasmodium in the blood. And out of similarly blood of blood of hundred healthy person also be taken. And what they find actually, they find actually 7% out of 100 from healthy one. Are affected were affected or having plasmodium in their blood. So to prove that the hypothesis that plasmodium is the cause of malaria, these experiments have been done and what the results come that 7 out of healthy, 7 out, uh, out of 100 healthy person had plasmodium in their blood. Now we know that the plasmodium in the blood of healthy people was an incubation period. What is the incubation period? The pay, uh, yeah, incubation period here, I've told you, the seven persons who are affected, but they are at the time of incubation period. Incubation period. It is a period when the plasmodium get entered, enter is into the body, Okay, the period between the entry of the parasite and the host and appearance of the symptoms. The results were quite convincing and proved the hypothesis that plasmodium is the cause of malaria was true one. So, further, it is proved uh, experiments showed results show and uh, the second experiments I'm not uh, concluding here because it is the second hypothesis and before this we have discussed the EFA King observations in 1983 EFA King Okay, you have uh, understand that first of all hypothesis, then deduction, then deduction, and uh, then experiments, and the results give to gives you to make uh, the theory. But theory is not going to be happen until and unless other scientists will again to test the same thing as the previous scientist has done before to prove that that his results are accurate that is also called as research so AFE King proved that three observations he had actually given that uh, the people who sleep under nets They didn't 
get malaria or I must say here or they have no plasmodium in their blood secondly the people who sleep near smoky fires the people who sleep near smoky fires as compared to those who don't sleep near smoky fires had no malaria they were not affected I must say they were not affected by plasmodium third third observation what he made was the people that smoky fires and the third one is outdoor people who sleep outdoors bring them sit outdoors in the gardens sit outdoors in the garden for example as cross is the main uh, attraction for the these parasites called mosquitoes they caught malaria or had plasmodium in their blood as compared to those who sleep inside okay and uh, further this more scientists have proved like Ronald Ross and on the basis of these uh, AFA King also detect two he also gave two deductions or have deductions plasmodium should be present in mosquitoes plasmodium can get a mosquito can get plasmodium by biting a malaria patient so further it is also proved by different scientists that if plasmodium is the in the blood in the blood of the human being then it should be bitten by a malaria uh, mosquito In this happening, Ronald Ross, Ronald Ross has done experiments. First, he used to see the mosquitoes multiply in the stomach, and he used the Anopheles mono, Anopheles mosquito to check in his in its this female mosquito allowed to bite a malarial patients allowed to bite a malarial patient what he observed that he that the Anopheles mosquito gets the plasmodium and then he observed its stomach which is multiplication multiplication of plasmodium in the stomach of the Anopheles which is furtherly moved to the saliva of the Anopheles mosquito 
and then he again this law in the next logical experiment was allow an infected mosquito to bite in the this infected mosquito is allowed to bite a healthy person okay if the hypothesis is true so the person got malaria of course but the scientists avoid uh, using human beings for experiments so he used sparrows Ross used sparrows and the Culex mosquito to bite an sparrow suffering from malaria. Some of the mosquitoes were killed and studied at various times. In each mosquito, rolls found plasmodium <laughs> multiplied in the wall of the stomach and then it moved to the saliva and then he used to bite the healthy sparrow from the Culex mosquito my to spare okay first of all the cutest mosquitoes bite the sparrows who are suffering from the malaria and he had seen that it's again multiplying the stomach of the in the stomach of the mosquitoes and then it moves to the slavery gland of the mosquito and then it he used to bite the healthy culex uh, sorry he bite to the, the culex mosquito with saliva in the with plasmodium in the saliva used to bite the healthy sparrows and what he find that they become suffering from the malaria that this is the second experiment and third one he allowed to bite he applied this on the human beings finally and same results he got that first of all taking the blood from the malarial patient he allowed to bite the malaria mosquito to bite the healthy person and then again after getting the plasmodium in the stomach multiplying in the stomach and furtherly moving to the saliva he allowed to bite the healthy person the that mosquito when bite the healthy person it becomes affected he becomes he became affected from the malaria as plasmodium were present in the blood of the patient so this becomes a theory after these experiments these becomes the actually theory then it becomes the theory theory oftenly tested and never rejected it becomes oftenly tested and never rejected by different experiments and when these theories have been checked by different scientists it becomes a law universal law or law and principle which can never be changed if a theory survives a doubtful doubtful approach and continues to be supported by experiment evidence it becomes a law or principle a scientific law is a uniform or constant fact of nature so after law and principle it becomes a law and principle which cannot be a theory survives a doubtful when a theory survives a doubtful approach and experience uh, continues to be supported by experimental evidence
across the doubtful approaches Secondly, supported by experimental evidence. Then it becomes a law or principle. And when it becomes a law or principle, it becomes a scientific law. A scientific law is uniform or constant fact of nature. It is irrefutable theory. Basically, it is irrefutable theory, which can't be challenged. which can't be challenged again. The examples we have very well known. You have seen Mendel's law. And furthermore, law of inheritance. Etc. This has also become law. Now, this is the law that plasmodium is the cause of the malaria. If the patient is affected by the plasmodium, he must be ill with malaria. And the responsible must be the mosquito. So these are the theories, detections that plasmodium should be present in the mosquitoes. A mosquito can be can get plasmodium by a biting a malarial patient. Two detection plasmodium should be present in the mosquitoes. A mosquito can get plasmodium by biting a malarial patient. It's also a law. So it's proved that, that plasmodium is the cause of malaria. Hope so this video helps you all.